Hello, this is Pixel. Today I'm taking a look at a game called Crown Trick. So this game is coming out on October 16, which is two days from recording this. But with this particular game, I just want to start with the end of the review in the beginning of the review. This game is awesome. I am enthusiastic about this game like I have not been for any game that I have reviewed since I rebooted the channel in May. With this level of enthusiasm, let's just jump right into the gameplay mechanics. This game is a roguelite, turn-based fantasy dungeon crawler game that's broken into a method that's kind of like a strategy RPG. You get a board, and every time you move one space, the enemy is allowed to move one space. Naturally, in chess, this would result in a stalemate. So to give a little more versatility to your movement, the game developers have added a mechanic they call blink into this game. This allows you to teleport some number of spaces away from your exact location and allows you to not take a turn. So you could jump to the enemy and attack them quickly, or you could jump away from the enemy and make a getaway. Now the catch with this system is blink is only allowed to be used up to three times before you need to start recharging charging it again. There are a number of mechanics that allow you to recharge that blink, but you always have to be maintaining that gauge and watching that gauge if you want to have success within your combat. For attacks, you're given a variety of different weapons. When you start out in the dungeon, you're given a choice between one of two different weapons that may be similar or may be very different. Now, all of the different weapons have very different attack patterns. Axes, for instance, go all around you. Guns will shoot out in a line right in front of you. You could have swords that attack in a line in front of you. There is a lot of different weapons in this game, so you have to be very careful what you pick based on what your preference is. Enemies are similarly varied in their attack patterns. Depending on the enemy, you'll have enemies that can shoot ranged weapons or spells at far distances, or you'll end up with enemies that have to be really close to you, and so they'll try to slowly corner you so they can attack you there. There's also several elements in the game to further complicate things, and some of these work in pairs, like there's oil and fire, which covering something in oil and setting on fire does additional fire damage, and there's water and lightning, but there is also poison, which as most games does a damage over time effect. Now these elements can be found as spells and skills in the game that either you can have or the enemies can have, but there's also different environmental pockets of these things, whether they be traps or barrels, something that can be triggered, and you'll have to be analyzing these in each room for each fight so that you can navigate the room in a strategic way and use those to your advantage rather than stepping on them and having them blow up in your face. Finally, there's a guard break mechanic in this game as well, not for you so much as for the enemies. There's a little shield icon that has a number by every single enemy, and as you hit the enemy, that number will decrease. Once it hits zero, their guard will break and they'll be stunned for a number of turns after that. For a normal enemy, this pretty much is their demise. You're going to be able to chip away their health so much they're just going to die as soon as you guard break them. For the mid-bosses and the bosses, though, this presents you with an opportunity to chip away some of their health and then make a hasty escape, or to just go full in and do a ton of damage to them all at once. In addition to this break mechanic, there is a break bonus gauge where if you can in quick succession break multiple enemies' guards, You'll get extra blink charges through this mechanic, but you'll also get some stat bonuses for that room, which will allow you to make quick work of all of the enemies there. As you fight through each room, you will be gaining both gold and these soul shards. Now the soul shards can be used to be brought back into your main hub bastion outpost area and then spent on upgrades with various NPCs that you'll find while you're in the dungeon. Any soul shards that you don't use while you're in the outpost, if you enter back into the dungeon, they get lost. Gold, however, is a little bit different in that the gold that you collect can be spent within the dungeon, but there is no place for you to spend gold while you're in the outpost. You do find shops in the dungeon, that's where you typically will spend your gold, but that needs to be spent or else very little of it will go from one run to the next. As you run through the dungeon, you're going to run into multiple different special rooms. Some of them are big locked chests, which if you have a key, you can open them. There's also these event pillars that you can run into, which are kind of like the blessing statues in Rogue Legacy, in that you can interact with them, but you might get something negative out of it, or something mixed out of it, rather than something that's pure positive. 
This was one of the really strong points I felt for this game. There were a ton of these different types of event rooms that you could run into, and I felt that they really added to the variety of each run. It made each run feel unique, but it also made you feel very powerful and very in control of the random generation that was going on around you. You always had a lot of different choices to be made, and if you made wrong choices, it felt like it was your fault that you were failing because you made poor choices. Very infrequent in this particular roguelite did I have an experience where I thought that the random generator just really hosed me as opposed to my choices or my decisions being the fault of why I failed. Each floor of the dungeon consists of normal enemy rooms, special rooms, which I've both covered, but then also a mid-boss room, which is a familiar that once you kill them, you'll get to use their abilities as part of your skill set if you'd like to, but also a boss room. And after you complete the boss, you'll be able to get new blueprints to unlock new items into the random generator of things inside the dungeon. For the overall presentation of the game, and I'm talking here about music and sound design and animation and graphics all bundled together, because I think that those elements oftentimes do all go together. I think that there is a cohesive creation here. I think everything just melds well together. However, I also think that this is going to be very subjective. I have heard people complain about two-dimensional animated or pixely games before. If that's not for you, you're probably not even listening at this point in this review, but if it's not for you, then it's not for you. I really thought that the graphic style here and all of the music and sound design, it all was very endearing and it all worked really well together. I think that's the most important thing and I think that they executed that fairly well. But that really isn't the allure of this game for me. The allure of this game is the gameplay. It is very rare for me to find a game where I don't find a lot of flaws in the game mechanics. I always feel like something is a little bit misplaced or something doesn't feel quite right. Crown Trick was one of those very, very rare cases where everything just feels right. To the point where I died several times in this game and every time that I died, every time that I had a big mistake, it always felt like it was my fault. Just like in Dark Souls, where the game feels very, very difficult, but at the same time, every time you get hit and every time that you lose, you feel like you're learning something and you feel like you'll do better next time, but also you feel like that was your fault. I lost because of bad decisions and bad moves that I took, not because the game surprised me with anything. And that's very, very true here with Crown Trick. Everything feels difficult, but everything feels at the same time very, very fair. And the weird thing about this particular type of design is, is that when you fail, when you go out into the dungeon and you die and you lose and you start back at the outpost, when you get there, you're presented with this feeling of optimism, this feeling of, oh, I know what I did wrong and I can learn from that and I can do better. But I also get to level up my character with a couple different skills and then move on that way as well. Speaking of those leveling up mechanics as well, I don't feel like they were very heavy handed. In a lot of roguelites, they give you a ton of upgrade paths and then it feels like success is just inevitable. Here, I don't think that success is inevitable. If you get back into the dungeon and you start making the same stupid decisions, there's no way you're gonna be able to over level yourself into success. You're gonna have to learn, you're gonna have to be more strategic, and you're gonna have to think your way through every single dungeon. So if you are interested in any game that's at all like this, definitely check this one out. I am very enthusiastic about this game. I think this one's going to be one of those games that kind of comes out of nowhere and a lot of people really like it. I would be surprised if this game is not liked by the general populace. And while this is going to kind of wrap up this review, I'm going to say there's probably lots of things that I didn't get a chance to talk about here. So I'm also going to post some kind of gameplay demo videos of me talking about the different mechanics and playing through a level or two, maybe a couple bosses in this game. If you're interested in this game, take a look at those because they'll better describe what I'm doing. They're going to be a little bit slower, a little bit longer, but those will be worth your time. If you don't want to wait for my gameplay videos to drop, of course, go out and check them more out on YouTube. I definitely support more information about this game because I, I want to see these developers succeed. I think that they've created something really, really cool here. 
clearly if you've made it this far in the video, you really liked this video, so you should like this video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, you should take a look at some of my other reviews, because I have other reviews that are probably even better than this one, even though this game is awesome. And if you like those videos, then you should consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for hanging out with me, and until next time, this has been Pixel.